Beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, Salah is a gift, as we all know, given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is important that we consider it a gift because some people consider Salah a burden. If we consider it a burden, we will not be able to achieve the broader blessings of Salah. There are several categories of people. The first are those who don't read Salah, yet they want to call themselves Muslimin. And the Prophet wasallam says in a correct narration, he says the distinguishing factor between us and the disbelievers is Salah. It is the distinguishing factor. You want to know if a person is a Muslim or not, all you need to look at is the Salah. If the Salah is in order, it would show that they are believers. If the Salah is not in order, they have a lot to improve. So this is a very, very important narration. First category of people, they want to call themselves Muslim, but they don't want to fulfill the basic gift of Islam. The second category of people are those who call themselves Muslim and they fulfill their Salah, but considering it a burden, they find it tough. They are lazy. They come last minute and they go out first. The last one's in and the first one's out. Subhanallah. In that case, it depends on the individual and the type of link they have with Allah. They have a lot to improve. We need to improve our link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for this reason, we say it's not good enough for us to consider salah a burden, even though we are fulfilling it. There is a step higher than that which we need to get to. So there are people who read salah because they have to read it. They have to do it, so they do it. But there is the highest category of people. Those are the ones who read Salah because they want to read it, not because they have to, because they want to. So you find that they are doing it, considering it a gift of Allah. These are the ones whom when they come into the house of Allah, they forget everything outside the house of Allah, which is not related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you notice, we, mashallah, because we have a carpet in the masajid these days in a beautiful, clean environment, we remove our shoes outside. Similarly, remove all your things that will connect you to this world outside the door. When you come inside, you need to be able to stand, concentrating for the sake of Allah. I'm sure we've heard such a beautiful verse. Stand for the sake of Allah with total submission, concentration, humility, conviction, and with the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such a person will be able to reap the benefit of salah. Do you know that if you were to fulfill one salah with jama'ah in the proper way and then you are to fulfill the next salah with jama'ah in the proper way, it would act as an expiation of the minor sins between the two salahs. The minor sins, the Prophet says, Follow a bad deed with a good deed in order to wipe out the bad deed. Some people don't understand it. They think you can go and murder someone and then go for Hajj. You can steal their money and then go for Hajj and everything will be deleted. No, that's not what the Hadith means. It is speaking here about minor sins, small things that happen on a daily basis. You might have done something, you might have said something minor and so on. You know, there might be a few little small things that happen which we know or we don't know sometimes. When we follow up with a charity or a good deed or a Salah, automatically we find that these minor sins have disappeared they will go away as for the major sins they require what is known as tawbah what is known as repentance you need to turn to allah in repentance and ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness for the major sins you need to admit the sin you need to regret it you need to ask allah's forgiveness and you need to promise not to do it again those are the major sins so getting back to the issue of salah we enter the house of allah the question i have do you feel that this is the house of allah you know, if you are entering the house of a huge businessman or a prince or someone big, a king or a leader or an Amir, you would feel that I'm entering this big house. Perhaps there is surveillance here. Perhaps there is this person here. Perhaps, you know, I need to carry myself well. What is the impression this man is going to get of me? Let me apply a little bit of perfume. Let me look smart and decent. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Bani Adam khudhu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. Beautiful verse, O oh, children of Adam, you need to adorn yourself with your beauty when it comes to entering the houses of prayer, the place of sajda. When you want to connect with Allah, dress clean clothes. 
You must be smelling good. You must be looking good. You must be within a specific level of purity known as tahara. Tahara meaning cleanliness of a certain nature. You cannot read salah without wudu. You, you need the ablution. So when you're entering the house of Allah, ask yourself a question. Do I feel the calmness? Do I feel the serenity? Do I feel like I've entered a beautiful place? It's a question. I have come across some non-Muslims who have visited some masajid. You know, nowadays in the Western world, we have an open day where sometimes we have to welcome the non-Muslims. They want to see what is Islam all about. So they enter the masjid, they come. And some of them have told me that we bear witness. The minute we turn the corner with our car, we noticed some feeling of peace. When we saw this house of Allah, Amazing. The non-Muslim is telling you, when I entered this, there is some amazing serenity. So some of the ulama, they say, how can a non-Muslim feel the serenity of the house of Allah? But it's common sense. They are human beings. They will also feel a spirituality in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they have the right intention and the right heart, they will feel a goodness. So if the non-Muslims are telling me and you that we feel some calm atmosphere in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how come we as Muslims do not feel the calm in the house of Allah sometimes? Why is it that we find our own children and offspring away sometimes from the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Perhaps our intention needs to be rectified. Let me quickly take you through the first part of the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu and which I sh I'm sure a lot of us should know of by heart. It is the hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was sending Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu to Yemen, common hadith, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, Inna ka ta'ati qawman ahla kitab, falyakun awwala ma tad'uhum ilayh, shahadat an la ilaha illallah wa anni rasulullah. You will find some people who will be people of the book, O Mu'adh. First thing you should do to them, Call them towards Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasul. Call them towards worshipping Allah alone, sincerity for Allah, declaring Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as the final messenger. This includes obviously believing in the previous messages and believing in the previous books and coming down and understanding how Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a messenger of Allah and believing it. Then he says, "Fa inhum ata'uk li dalik, fa a'limhum." If they follow that, then let them know that Allah has prescribed upon them, which means He has made compulsory for them five salah during the day and night. Five salah. Now, I want to stop there because when we do not achieve the benefit or the serenity of the house of Allah, and if we do not achieve the peace through reading salah, it means there is something wrong with our shahada. This is what it means. Why? Because the first step is to accept the shahada and to understand that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger. And if you worship Allah alone without engaging in any form of polytheism or what is known as shirk, and if you are conscious of the worship of Allah alone, you've developed a direct link with your maker and you firmly believe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to me and you to show us how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to show us why we have been created in this world and to lead us towards paradise and that he is the final messenger and his message is final and totally complete then only you will be able to benefit from salah but when we are involved in innovation how can we benefit from salah we come to the masjid our heart is not there when we are involved in association of partnership with Allah or some shirkiyat, some little uh, polytheism and so on, which is obviously a major sin, then how can we benefit from salah? We won't. We will find it a burden. We will not be able to develop a link with Allah. Today, on the globe as a whole, people are searching for peace. People are searching for inner contentment. Do you know that the Prophet ﷺ used to tell Bilal ibn Rabah, Arihna biha, ya Bilal. What is he speaking about? He says, Oh Bilal, let that comfort come through it. Through what? Through the Adhan. Go and call out the Adhan. We will achieve the comfort of that Adhan. Amazing. I recall these beautiful words of success that we hear so many times a day. And in this country, mashallah, the country of Qatar, beautiful Muslim country, we are so fortunate to be hearing the Adhan, not just from one Mi'dana or Minara. But from so many different places, you are spoilt for choice as to where to go for salah. 
you want to hear a beautiful long recitation, mashallah, there is a masjid, you can go, you can take a little bit of time. And subhanallah, if you are in a little bit of a rush, Allah forgive us, and you are one of those who are speedy Gonzalez, you know, you want to get to a masjid where they finish in no time, you can find that masjid as well. May Allah forgive us, our shortcoming, we are human beings. You know, come time for Ramadan, it's around the corner, inshallah. People fall in different categories. Salah has a blessing. When you come and you fulfill your salah for the sake of Allah, and you know, you're, you concentrate, you are thinking, you are worshipping Allah. You know, the, the hadith of Ihsan, where the Prophet ﷺ says, you worship Allah as though you are seeing him. And if you cannot see, then at least you should know that he is watching you. And when you get to that level, it's amazing. Some people, what they do, come Salat at Taraweeh, they look for the masjid, which finishes in five minutes. Five minutes, pecking on the ground. You know, top, bottom, in, out, salah, alaykum as out. Is that salah? We have a beautiful month of Ramadan. You have, mashallah, fasting. May Allah grant us the month of Ramadan. You have so much ibadah, so much charity. Why do we want to waste all that? Just because we cannot spend 10, 15 minutes. I have at one stage in my life heard people who say, brother, that masjid finishes in 10 minutes. Let's go there. Do you know what they do? After salah, they stand outside and they are talking for one hour. By that time, the others are coming out. Look at shaitan. After salah, they sit outside the masjid. They are chatting, they are smoking, they are doing anything. But for one hour, they are sitting outside. So couldn't we have spent a little bit more time inside the house of Allah? This is what we say. You want the blessings of salah, you need to rectify your shahada. And when we say rectify your shahada, it sounds simple, but it's a very deep statement. It means become a good Muslim. You know, enter into submission in totality. Ya amanu fi O you who believe, enter into submission in totality, in totality, holistically. Not only every one of us, but on top of that, every aspect of submission, submit to it. Don't just submit to whatever suits you. And then whatever does not suit you, don't submit to it. Astaghfirullah. You have a man reading salah, and the other hand is in the nightclub drinking alcohol. Can that salah benefit him? It's like, you know, Astaghfirullah, Allah protect us. I know we're in a Muslim country, but I have seen in South Africa that People told me there is a huge casino. You know where they gamble? Huge casino. And in the casino, it's so big. They have so many different departments. They have a musalla. Wallahi, without a joke, they have a musalla. They told me, do you know why? Because those who come to gamble, a lot of them are Muslim. And they do not miss their salah. And they make dua. Oh Allah, I'm going to gamble. Grant me success. Look at how we have become so weak. That we think before you go to steal, read two rakat of salah to say, Ya Allah, I'm going to rob that man tonight. Inshallah, I don't get caught. Ya Allah, help me. I'm making two rakat. Astaghfirullah. But this is the mentality of man. It is happening. May Allah protect us. So Allah says, Oh, you who believe, enter into submission in totality. Your salah will not benefit you if you have not removed from your heart the love for that which is wrong. You need to place in your heart the love for that which is right. And this brings me to a very important point. My brothers and sisters, we are insane. We are human beings. We falter. You know, shaitan comes and tries his luck with us every day. He tries his luck different ways. Sometimes he wins, sometimes we win. We hope we can win more than he wins. And we hope when he wins, we need to quickly fight back with Tawbah. We need to fight back with repentance. You see? So as human beings, one thing you need to know is even if you have fallen into sin for some reason, the fact that you admit that you are wrong is the first step to success. When you admit what I did was very bad, it was wrong. Alhamdulillah, that is a sign that you want to improve. But when a person wants to read Salah before he does something wrong for Allah to help him in that which is wrong, then he is making a mockery of Allah and he will never benefit from that Salah of his, nor will he benefit from much more from anything else. First, he needs to go back and develop a link with Allah. It's like, for example, may Allah protect us all. There are some non-Muslims, they say in Ramadan we fast. Have you seen some of them? Maybe even in this country there are some non-Muslims, in Ramadan we fast. Now for them, the good news is they will achieve the health benefits of fasting. Health, maybe it will help them. They might feel a bit calm. They might achieve some form of inner peace uh, to a certain extent which is connected to the dunya. But will they achieve the ajr and will they achieve the deeper reward? 
The answer to the question is, let them go and declare the shahada and then try again. Allahu Akbar. Let them understand the deen and try again. It's like a non-Muslim entering the masjid, he will feel, like I've said, the serenity of the house of Allah. But if he reads salah, the salah, one of the conditions of acceptance of that salah is for you to be a Muslim. So although they might feel for a moment temporarily that we are happy, we are content, there is no deeper blessing that will come out of it because they are lacking Iman and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same applies to the Muslim. When we have Islam in us, we are saying the Shahada. But if we are only paying lip service to it, I'm only saying it by tongue and I'm not worried about anything else. You know, adultery to be committed, it's done. Haram to be done, it's done. Cheating, deceiving, it's done. Anything else, it's done. And then I want to come and say, Allahu Akbar. My farad might be fulfilled. But do you achieve the broader blessings when your heart is not even trying to give up the other sins? This is why this evening, I wanted to raise this very important point to say, if you would like the blessings of Salah to be felt in your life, you need to have a good heart. In your heart, you need to tell yourself, Ya Allah, whatever wrong I am doing, help me to leave it. Whatever bad I'm doing, help me to recognize it. You know, sometimes we're doing bad things. We don't recognize that we're doing bad things. Some people are involved in innovation and bid'ah. Sometimes they don't recognize it because they did never think about it. They did not even look into it and they don't even realize what I'm doing is wrong. So first we ask Allah, Ya Allah, grant me the ability to distinguish between right and wrong and grant me the ability to stay on the right path. Allahumma habbib ilayna al-imana wa zayinhu fi qulubina wa karrih ilayna al-kufra wa al-fusuqa wa al-isyan. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa arzuqna al-tiba'a wa arina al-batila batila wa arzuqna al-jtinaba. Oh Allah, make loved to me, make loved to us iman and beautify it in our hearts and make hated for us that which is disbelief and sin and that which is in transgression. Keep it away from us. And the next dua, which we are taught by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Oh Allah, show us the right as right and help us tread on it. And show us the bad as bad and help us stay away from it. Amazing dua, which means I want to see the good as good and help me to walk towards it. And I want to see the bad as bad and help me to stay away from it. This is when I will be able to achieve the greater blessings of Salah. So let's look from a purely worldly aspect. How does Salah bless you? How is Salah blessing you from a worldly aspect? Religiously, we know we will achieve blessings. Allah says, Salah prohibits from immorality and evil. It will stop you and block you from immorality and evil. You read your first Salah of the day and you are worried about the next Salah. Between the two, you will not be doing anything evil. If you read your Salat al dhuhr and in your mind you are thinking, now is Salat al-Asr in a few moments, let me worry about it. How are you going to sin between the two Salahs? When you're, you are worried about the next Salat. When you read Salat al-Asr, you are worried about Maghrib. How are you going to sin between the two? This is the consciousness of Salat. It will help you to become a better person. When you talk with Allah, beautiful words of the Quran, how can you go out and swear? How can you go out and lie? Now when you meet your spouse, your family members, your friends, those you work with, your acquaintances and others, you will have good words because your mouth is used to uttering good words in Salah. You are conscious of it. These are some of the spiritual benefits. Another one also Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu sta'inu bis sabri wa salah. O oh, you who believe, seek assistance through bearing patience, forbearance, what is known as sabr and salah. Salah meaning the prayer, calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you will be able to achieve alleviation of your suffering if you fulfill your salah and you are patient. Now if you go to the worldly benefit, salah is spaced out in such a beautiful way. Such a beautiful way. One, early in the morning just before the sun rises. So you are up. As a Muslim, you are up. The non-Muslim doctors tell you early to bed, early to rise. Makes a man healthy, wealthy and wise. That's an English saying. So we are taught early to bed and early to rise is your duty as a Muslim. Allah automatically wants to make you healthy, wealthy and wise. Subhanallah. For free. If you are going to live Islam, what time will you get up? Can you be a person who's going to get up 11 in the morning when everyone's already at work? 
No, if you're a Muslim, one of the blessings of Salah is you are up on time. When you're up on time, you get your children up on time. Mashallah, you read your Fajr Salah. You might sit for a while with your Quran. You might say a few good words to your family members. And then you, you probably will have breakfast together, something light, your tea, whatever you have together. Today, the world is weeping and crying because families are disintegrating. Everyone is on his own computer, locked in his own room. No one talks to each other. Father goes to work early morning. Mother's gone somewhere else. Children gone to school. And you know the house is now split. You're a Muslim. You get up early. Mashallah, you spend the beginning of the day with Allah and then with your family. You've had the cup of tea, even if it took you five minutes. The blessing of Salah is, you will see your children, how are you my darling? How are you doing my little boy, my little daughter? I really love you. Today you are going, make a dua for me. Let me make a dua for you. This is a beautiful environment in a Muslim home, which is lost in a lot of homes. It's lost. Our children are brought up by the television and the computer, because we don't have time for them. One meal with your child is priceless. People really are suffering because they don't spend time with their children. So the children don't know what's happening in the world. But you get up in the morning, inshallah, one of the blessings of Salah, you will see your children off. Inshallah, whether they go to school and whatever happens. What time is Salat al-Dhuhr? Just after the zenith, you know? Just after the zenith, when the sun is right at the top, just after it tilts off, is Salat al-Dhuhr. Amazing how the world has kept that time as lunch hour. Have you noticed that? Lunch hour. So people say, when is lunch hour? You say, similar to the time of Dhuhr. Amazing. Look at a Muslim. Allah did not inconvenience you. From the morning right up to that time, there are some voluntary prayers, but they are no compulsory prayers. So when you get to Allah's, meaning when you get to a higher level that Allah would like you, you know, to achieve more and more, you can offer voluntary prayers. But if you have not yet got to that level, at least you know that, you know what? It is now midday. Let me do something. What do you do? You make wudu. Wudu is ablution. This ablution with water, what does it do for you? It, your face is washed. Your hands are washed, your feet are washed, you are fresh, you have wiped your head and so on. You are feeling good. That medically is proven to rejuvenate the individual at midday, just like it does at any other time. Rejuvenate you. You are woken up, you are refreshed again. Amazing. You've washed your face with cold water. We are looking at health blessings of Salah. Amazing. Now you come in the middle of all the hype of the day, you have unplugged from your work and you have plugged in with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar, silent recitation in Salat al-Dhuhr. And you're just thinking, subhanAllah, you're reading and the amazing feeling of serenity. Wallahi, if the non-Muslims knew the sweetness of the Salah we have, they would fight us to take it from us. Promise you. Ask those who have turned to Islam. They will tell you no religion has an act of worship anywhere near the Salah of a Muslim. No religion, neither Judaism nor Christianity, not at all. Salah is a gift, so consider it a gift. And then you have Salatul Asr, mashallah, the late afternoon prayer. And then you have Salatul Maghrib just after the sunset. And then before you go to bed, you have Salatul Isha. Wow, look at one of the big blessings, your day, timetable, excellent. You know the professionals of today, you go to work, what do they do? Eight o'clock, they're there. One o'clock, they knock off. Two o'clock, they're back. Five o'clock, they're back at home. Any day, like clockwork, nobody needs to say anything, they're there. And come time, they're back, like clockwork. Why? They need a salary, they need to live, they need to feed their families, they need something, you need to buy the Porsche Cayenne, mashallah. You need to do so much more. You know, we're living in Qatar, we cannot just drive a little Toyota Corolla. This is Qatar. You need a Lamborghini, mashallah. Allah protect us. So people want to afford everything, they go to work on time, they come back on time. And they say, no, I don't want to lose my job. If my boss tells me, come over time, I go. Listen very carefully. We have something more important than the dirham and the dinar. We have something more important than the car, the Cayenne and the Lamborghini. We have something more important than the villa and the qusur, the palaces. We have Jannah to prepare for. We have paradise to prepare for. One of the biggest blessings of Salah, it does not only help you through your world. But it helps you through into the eternal life of paradise. So many people have passed away in front of us. They used to go to work. They used to work for a living. They used to try their best to feed their families and so on. But what happened? 
they passed away. They did not wait to see the benefit of that money. If they were fulfilling their salah, good luck to them. If they were fulfilling their duty to Allah, good news to them. So many have died in salah. So many have died coming to salah. So many have died just having left from salah. What about us? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Imagine we are ready to work for a salary because we will get promotion. We will get a bigger package. We will be happier. We will be able to build a house in our own country or help our relatives and so on. So we are happy. We work so hard. Allah says, just need a little bit of salah, a little bit. It doesn't take too long. In 24 hours, you are being asked for minimum of 24 minutes. For every hour, pay one minute. Come on. For every hour, pay one minute. How long does it take? Minimum. Minimum. Obviously, it should be more than that, but I'm talking of the bare minimum. 24 minutes for the five salah a day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us blessing. To be honest with you, when a person fulfills salah correctly, another great blessing is baraka. Baraka is, it translates as the term blessing. And what it means is Allah grants you the benefit of perhaps a small amount of money that will last a long period of time. Small amount of money that you buy something with and it is a bargain. You still have change and you are so happy. And sometimes you might have struck a deal. You buy a car, for example, the baraka in the vehicle, because you use it to go to the house of Allah and to do good things. The money you have used on servicing it or panel beating it or anything else is almost nil, if any at all. Why? Because there is blessing. But when there is no blessing in one's wealth, you can have a salary of 20,000 riyal. What will happen? In one week, you say, where did my money go? I don't understand what happened here. How come? I had so much money in my hand, it's gone. That's because we did not develop a link with Allah. Wallahi, you develop a link with Allah, you will be able to prioritize even how you spend. Amazing, how you spend. Because a person who fulfills five salah a day is conscious of Allah and is trying to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Do you think he's going to blow his money and throw it away and be extravagant and so on? No. He will understand that Islam teaches me neither to be too extravagant nor to be too miserly. But in the middle, I need to make sure that I've spent where I need to and I need to save where I can. I pay my zakah and I give my charities and I need to know this wealth belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is an amana, just like my body and yours. And I perhaps want to end with this topic or with this particular point. My body and yours is actually not my body and yours. It is an amana and a trust from Allah. It is a uniform for the soul that you have. This uniform, you're going to take it out and leave it. And you're going to go. Do you know that? Your soul, the ruh, the soul that is you, has been lent a uniform, which you are wearing whilst you are in the world. Once you die, you remove your uniform and you go. Uniform will remain. For as long as Allah wants and how he wants. So remember, do not be deceived to think this is my body. I can do what I want. You cannot. It's just a uniform. When you have your uniform as your workplace, if you're a policeman or a security guard or anything else and you have a uniform, are you allowed to do whatever you want with that uniform? No, you cannot just put paint and colors and say, you know, this is my uniform. No, your workplace has rules. The same applies your body. You cannot just do what you want with it. Keep it and handle it the way Allah has asked you to keep it and handle it. And Allah will grant you happiness, contentment, calmness, serenity. This beautiful body that Allah has given us, it requires spirituality. It needs spirituality. It feels and it senses amazingly the benefit in anything that is spiritual. This plant in front of me, subhanAllah, it feels and senses, it feels and senses spirituality as well. People might laugh, but wallahi, it has feelings. Recently, if any one of you have come across a YouTube clip of a flower that opens up when the adhan is called, go and check it on YouTube, search for the adhan flower, and you will find these flowers that open up only when the adhan is called. Wallahi, you will find it. This news was on CNN, at least something good came out of CNN, see? So amazing, if a flower responds to the call to success, aren't we fools if we do not respond to the call of success?
amazing call to salah. It must make our hair stand. You're a mu'min. You're a believer. The call to success opens a flower, but it does not open my heart and yours. Wallahi, it's about time we revisited this. I call on yourselves and myself to revisit our connection with salah and with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, the owner of the doors of success shall open those doors of success for you and for me if we answer his call to success whenever he calls to success and never lose hope. Continue fulfilling your salah. One day you will find yourself smiling all the way to Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from myself and yourselves. May he make us true followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.